Yeehaw! Welcome aboard the Air Force on Christmas. Oh. That's what you want to see. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Get ready to have a good time. This is exciting, isn't it? Hey, Air Force. Malika Likimaka. That's Hawaii's way to say Merry Christmas to you. This show is how the Gare Force is going to do it. I take this mask off. Hi, I'm Alan Delinka on the controls, as usual. And I have the script in front of me, so I might look down from time to time, but you know I'm with you all the way, because all who come to this happy stream, happy belated Diwali, this is why I have to look at the script, happy Hanukkah, Festivus, and Winter Solstice, have a very Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad! Happy Holidays and Season's Greetings. And don't forget, tomorrow is Boxing Day and the start of Kwanzaa. How about that? That was former Mr. Blotto oh. keyboardist David B. Allen on the Roland Juno DS61 keyboard. Check out his music page on Facebook sometime. I washed it through some audio filters to give it that lovely radio quality. <coughs> No matter what you celebrate, no matter where you are, it's time for a digital mimosa. We've got Christmas magic for you. Well, magic for Christmas Day with the return of magician Bill Cook. Gary says this is the Gear Force non-inflatable Christmas almost spectacular. Well, we are not live, but I know we've got a good one for you today. Since it's edited, it's filled with Easter eggs and special guest appearances. Go figure. And this show has no lawn puke, nor a single square of peppermint bark. Nope, not a square to spare. Since we are not live streaming today, Christmas Day 2020, we won't be able to see your comments in real time, but you can share them as always. Please share the show with your friends and family. As usual, I still strongly recommend you use the Gear Force Live YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe. You can see all our live shows and replay any you've missed right there. Okay, with that, fasten your seatbelts. It's time to go wheels up on the Gear Force Live recorded Christmas almost spectacular. Gary, Gary, Gary. Here's a young speaker who is really in demand. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. <laughs> but wait, there's more. He's Gary Meyer. And that's how I can get an 18-inch waist. Just catching up on some Vera Ellen from White Christmas. Okay, she was anorexic. But everybody in the movie, as we've talked about, had a waist so small, they wore tambourines for belts. Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, as merry as it can be this pandemic year. But we're here, and we're going to have a little kind of spectacular show for you. Glad you could join us. And coming up in just a few minutes, magician Bill Cook. Bill was on a few months ago. We enjoyed him so much. We thought, let's bring him back for some Christmas entertainment. And later in the program, my friend Jay Gepner with a song, Carl from Plover, Wisconsin. You know him. He has the worm farm. He'll have a special holiday message. And... Hey, Sven Gulli here, and I don't know if I should wish you a Merry Christmas or a Scary Christmas or a Gary Christmas, but either way, hope you're having a good time. And I did want to say, unfortunately, this year, again, I've got coal in my stocking. It really makes it difficult to walk. I don't know why. Anyway, happy holidays. Hey, Gear Force, it's producer Keith. Have a great time unwrapping the schnauzer this holiday season. Let's do that. Let's just enjoy whatever we have left here of 2020. Get to 2021, get the vaccination, and get back out there. Hi, I'm Terry Savage, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy, and prosperous New Year. You know that word, healthy and prosperous New Year, takes on new meaning as we leave 2020 behind. Healthy, of course, we all suddenly appreciate that value. Prosperity, well, that's taken on a new definition. Uh, we have so many fellow Americans who are just scrabbling on the edge, hoping that their stimulus check will come in time to put groceries on the table. So as if you are one of Gary's many listeners and followers who are in the prosperity category, 
Can I urge you just uh, not as a tax deduction for the new year, but just as you look around to find a good worthy cause, whether it's a Salvation Army or a family in need or helping others in some way to share your prosperity this year as we move into 2021. The one good thing I can say about the new year, I know it's going to be a prosperous year. We will get COVID behind us. The vaccine will work. The economy will open up. There will be jobs. And we'll realize the best way to prosperity is a growing economy. That's my wish for all of us as Americans in the new year. I'd like to bring on Leslie now and see what she's drinking, because I have a special. <laughs> hey, I, there she is. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, I got a shark. Uh, I'm sorry, a uh, Sauvignon, Cabernet Sauvignon. Very nice. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, uh, Eddie, can I? Refresh your eggnog. Can I get you something to eat? Can I take you out to the middle of nowhere and leave you for dead? Nice cup. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's uh, here, a here. classic. It, it, this is, I guess, not a surprise. Oh, hey, you know what? We haven't kicked the tires and lit the fires. We can't officially oh. be wheels up. There. There we are. Now we're wheels up. Hey, kids, I just heard that the air traffic controllers, oh, he's already come and gone. This. Glass, there's a sticker on the bottom, made in China. <laughs> Great. Well, what isn't? Although a lot of stuff's now being made in Vietnam. So that's oh, right. Cool. Let's I mean, mix it up. I mean, really, if you're a Vietnam vet and you see that Vietnam is a resort now and we get stuff from there and you went through hell over there, how do you even rectify all that? I it seems know. like it was all. All right. Ooh, no swears during Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's no. It's baby Jesus' birthday. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, well, hey, hey, may I introduce my cat before we go much further? Because she's <laughs> okay. likely to leave and she looks just so damn cute right now. Okay, here. let's see your cat. Hold on. Merry Christmas, everybody. A cat this in a Tula. basket. It's what a cat in a Christmas Tula? cat. That's Tula. Hi, hey, everybody. Tula. Okay. And you have another cat. Uh, Angus is around here somewhere, and until tomorrow, we have Piper living with us, and he'll be moving back to Georgia. And he, there, a rescue there. story, but yeah, it, yeah, it's a long rescue story that needs to simmer for a while. But uh, yeah. yeah, so we've got three in that uh, actually, and then uh, I'm babysitting my friend Krista's cat upstairs. Uh, so we have four cats in the house. This four is cats. talk about a pandemic mayhem yeah it's it's catatorium here and let's point out what we have in our rooms here the house that you see to my left your right that is the wright brothers bicycle shop and then that blinking house that's just a train station jerry has joined us jerry you've been so good to me over the years thank you jerry merry christmas and the christmas story stocking that's signed by flick or as oh. I said on my Facebook page when I posted it, flip. I, I, I mean, this is one of those years where you, can, you, just, you can't really get everything right. It's not going to happen. Not going to bother with it. That's Flick who signed that when he was in the studio many years ago. He's the one that stuck his tongue on the pole, right? Right. Right. Classic moment. Yeah. I haven't seen that one in a couple of years. You know, these days I kind of have to rotate them in and out too much of a good thing like i kind of fell out of love with love actually so maybe in two or three years we'll bring that one back i hear you i'm finding that i can't really watch a whole christmas vacation i know that's sacrilegious but i have to give that a rest i've been i don't know why but heavy into polar express this season and white christmas and look at this listener ryan sent me Miracle oh, on 34th Street. Yay. Okay. <laughs> you are all set. Black and white, so I'm good. I, I was really hankering for that, and Ryan was nice enough to send that to me. Thank you, Ryan from Wisconsin, and Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays, Gear Force listeners. This is Ryan from Wisconsin, wishing you a happy and healthy New Year. Make sure you stock up on some of Gary's favorite items, scratchers, the McRib sandwich, and cans of gasoline. Perfect items for the one you love. 
Hello, Gary, Leslie, Alan, John, Panda from BigFatPanda.com. How are you? Happy holidays to everyone that watches. Uh, it's been a different year, right? I mean, come on. I, I will say, I think I stopped taking things for granted. I realized that, you know, Disney, stuff that I love can be just taken away. So I'm appreciating everything a little bit more now. So uh, let's just be thankful for what we got. Let's be kind to each other. Uh, have a wonderful show. Mwah. I'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays, everyone, from the bottom of my heart. Big Fat Panda Ugly Christmas Sweater, not available in stores or online. Check out Gary's website in the Can't Live Without section for t-shirts and coffee mugs for The Gary Meyer Show. Gary's podcast and blog are there, too, all at GaryMeyer.com. Hey, this is Greg Potter wanting to wish all the uh, people at Gear Force One, the crew, Listeners, even Gary himself, wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and, of course, a Happy New Year. How could you not be happy? And to quote a holiday classic, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Okay, for those of you who've been paying attention, you know we got a real tree. Um, I've only been vacuuming probably like three or four times a day, but that down there is what I've got going in about the last hour. And... Um, there's a tree that is so close to death. I couldn't hang any more ornaments on it uh, because the branches just can't handle them. What do you have on your mantle there? I see, speaking of Miracle on 34th Street, the cane. Uh, the cane, that was my grandfather's actually, uh, or Kris Kringle's. Mm -hmm. um, I've got Santa, I've got the Nutcracker, I have the Jean Warriors and I make them their own personalized uh, Christmas hats every year, and uh, some candles and St. Nick's and, and the usuals. And that's a real fireplace, not gas. Uh, no, it's, it was gas assist, but it doesn't need it now. Yeah, that's a real log you got on there. That's nice. Nice All right. log. Right. All right. We're ready for a little magic, I think. Let's bring on Bill Cook. He was on, like I said, a few months ago and does some great magic. Bill? Welcome. Hey, there he is. Hey. That's the entrance. Hey, Gary. That's the official entrance. Hey, hey, good to see you. Thanks for having me. We love that coming out of the curtain, looking at the host. Is hey. that a deal? Like that's a deal. That's oh, what they do. I'm glad that's a thing. Hey, you're in showbiz. You don't know the the classic uh, entry. Normally, the it's like introduced, curtain opens, and then it's like do something. So <laughs> I don't point at the host until I'm done. But even then, it, it, by that point, it's like they're not looking at me. They're clapping and back to the host. So no, well, I can't, I can't it was see. really highlighted in the movie Joker. Oh when yeah, Joaquin Phoenix's character came out with. Joe Franklin, this thing, and he, and he, out and, yeah. And, well, he first he studied the show before he went on, and that was the thing with all the guests. They come around the curtain. Hey, Hi. how you doing? Yeah. Right. How have you been, Bill? I've been great, man. I got a new suit from Santa. <laughs> yes, this was my early Santa suit. I got a couple things early from Santa. I got this. I got a ponytail. Nice. That's new. Uh, <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, just you know, living the living the life in my studio. This is where I live, right here. You do all of your shows from there until further notice. Until further notice. So I'm keeping myself healthy and safe, and keeping everybody else healthy and safe as best I can. Well, we appreciate you being on today. And what do you have for us as far as some magic? Well, I got to tell you. The goal of the magician is to fool your eyes and your minds at the exact same time. 
and I figured out a way to do that uh, with this. This is the length of my mom's old clothesline. Now, you might be looking at me going, Bill, that's an awfully thick clothesline. Well, the reason why I needed a new suit is for the longest time I wore big pants. <laughs> There we go. Here, I will fool your eyes and your minds at the exact same time. I promise. Let's start with an agreement, though. Everybody's in agreement that that is one knot. You can see the knot. Your eyes see it. Your mind sees it. Everything's good. A snap of the finger, that becomes two knots. Two knots becomes three. Three knots becomes four. Four knots becomes five knots. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, he looks like the older brother from Home Alone. And Matt Damon had a kid with the Dread Pirate Roberts from The Princess Bride. <laughs> wow, that was a flurry. <laughs> Right, but you, you That's see, true. it's there, right? Okay. <laughs> now that you say that, that first knot's gonna come off. That second knot's going to come off. That third knot's going to come off. That fourth knot is going to come off, and I'm going to leave the fifth knot there. See, I said I was going to fool your eyes and your minds, and I did it. This was never a clothesline. Okay, not not. Wow. Okay, no, really, this uh, was never a clothesline because this was always a loop of rope. <gasps> Yep, that's one loop. That is uh, two loops, three, four, and that's five. Loop hey, rope. I knew something oh. was coming. That I knew. Well. I knew. I knew. That's why when he did that pause, I thought, "What? Wait, there's something <laughs> else coming." And <laughs> there it is. And the Mur and then the then the Murray Franklin pose. <laughs> is it Murray or Joe? I thought it was Murray Franklin. Okay. Because wasn't he already there, called uh, flick flip, so we can uh, make boy, up any names. I'm we doing that thing. Get. We've talked about this on the show. I can't remember <laughs> names right now. I'm hoping it's temporary. And they have said over the months that people, because they're so spun out by COVID, they're having a hard time remembering things. COVID Not brain. because they have COVID, just in general because of the anxiety and everything. There was a real talk show host, I believe, in New York. That his name was Joe Franklin, and I'm sure they based it, the Murray Franklin, off of that. I'm trying to cover myself here. Probably. Probably. Hey, you yeah. know what? It's your show. I'll say yeah. Let's go I, with that. Hey. <laughs> that Jerry, he's so smart. I am. Oh, wait. Gary, I'm yeah. sorry. There's Jerry. There's Jerry. <laughs> Jerry's the brains of the operation. There he is. Yeah, he read Sarah Ellen's book, and that's why he has the small waist. Well, <laughs> what else you got there, Bill? Well, um, I would like to show you a single card trick. How about that? Single. A single card trick. With a single card. That's why you it's called. Mean what you say, you say what you mean. Well, hey, you know what? I cannot tell you how many magicians are accused of lying, and that's not my thing. Uh, I'm going to do a card trick with one card. That is a hole. <laughs> not an yeah. a hole. That is a hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, it's Christmas. Don't do blue. <laughs> Don't do blue. That's Elvis, Elvis, don't do blue. That's three <laughs> holes. Uh, and that is uh, four holes. It's Christmas time. This is a religious card. It's holy. <laughs> I see what he did there. Sorry, my, my, my material is not <laughs> up to your standards. I'm so sorry. I have no standards. I'll take this hole off. And I'm going to take this hole off. And um, I'll take this hole off and I'll leave this hole on but watch three holes off one hole on here we go watch them as they uh, jump back on oh my gosh what well, hold it up to your face <laughs> so I can... cool. this, okay. this annoys my obsessive compulsive nature because they're not that's not where I put them see I, I put stuff back where I find them because they're supposed to be in those four corners and that's the way it goes and that <gasps> is my one card trick oh well done I, I know this is going to get into some probably negative magician territory. Is there any trick you can show us how you do it? I know when I watch the Penn and Teller show where they have magicians on and Penn and Teller try to guess how they did the trick, oh, but sure. they talk in a way where they don't tell the audience how it's done. They talk sure. magician talk and I still don't know how it's done. And is there anyone, I don't want to put you on the spot. If no, you don't no, want to no, do no. it, I understand. Because that's I, magician's it, code. It is your show. I will do whatever you ask me to. No, no, I, but, no I don't want to, again, tell me to stop. You don't want to do it. I will show you a trick and teach it to you at the same time. How about that? Okay. All right. I will perform it first, and then I'll teach it. Um, okay. In order for this to work, you're going to need a pen and a cap or, like, a pen or some stick thing and, like, a ring or a dime or a quarter or a pen. Like, pen and cap is easy. Okay. 
I'll make it, oop, I'll make it disappear. It happens on three. One, two, three. That, that's gone. <laughs> no, sorry, I didn't go very far. It's behind my ear. That's all. It's behind ear. Watch for real this time. Watch it, watch it. Uh, that's when uh, that's when it completely vanishes now. <laughs> okay. And that's the vanishing. <laughs> okay. He's okay. so jerking with you, Gary. I know, I know, I know. I, I did something by asking how you do a trick, and the magicians all say, if, if any a-hole, as we're called, ask that, just make him look like a complete idiot. No, and that's I'm what Bill is doing right now. This Thank trick you, Bill. Merry this Christmas. This trick, this trick has to do with my hands, but it's mostly to do with my feet. And I know it sounds weird, like all the work is done with my hands. Hear me out. Okay. I'm facing straight forward. If I were to do this trick straight forward, you would see it. The pen goes behind my ear. That's the first part. And then the, the cap goes in my pocket. That's the second part. But if I was facing forward, you would see that. So with my feet, if I'm pretending that I'm facing forward to midnight, I'm going to turn to 2 o'clock. That turns me at a 45-degree angle. Mm -hmm. Now that I make the pen vanish, it goes behind my head, and it forces me to turn, right? Mm -hmm. When I turn, my hand naturally goes to my pocket. Oh. Down. So I go, no, see, it's behind my ear. And look where my hand went right to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But because I'm pointing here, you will always look where I point. Right, the misdirect. So this, no, look, it's behind my ear. That's not good. Right. Versus, look, it's behind my ear. Now yeah. I can throw it into my pocket. These darn flaps were out. Uh, put me aside. So. And I need a new suit. I just, <laughs> this is brand new. So, we, we heard. Facing forward at two o'clock. And I say, I'm going to make it disappear. I don't know what it is. It could be the pen, the cap, my suit, whatever. One, to my head. Two, behind my ear. Three. Now, fair warning, if you're going to do this trick, use a pen. Don't use a Sharpie marker. <laughs> you you draw up your face. Yeah. I've yeah. done it. So, pen behind the ear. Now I turn from 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock and say, look, it's behind my ear. And I just threw the cap into my pocket. Okay. All right. Oh, back out. And it's gone. Now, well, I used to work at a restaurant, and I would teach this to the waiters and waitresses because they have the apron. It's even easier with the apron because you come from here. You go, look, it's gone. And now you just drop it in your apron. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Oh my God. that's actually a trick you can do. I'd like to know how to do that one card trick, too, but that's probably mm -hmm. private. Well, yeah. you know. You know yeah. Can I show you one more card trick? But yeah. it's, not, it's not really a card trick, but it's a, you'll see. Okay. Uh, uh, can I go to my side table, Alan? Is that possible? Alan is the director. He will give you instructions. Okay. You're at the side table. And is, that, is, uh, is it? It's, it's Leslie, right, Leslie? Yes. Fabulous. Leslie, I want you to know, I want the people at home to know, we haven't set this up. We have not prearranged this, but I would like, and correct me if I'm wrong. Have we set this up? Have we prearranged this? We have not. No. And I'm always 100% honest with folks. I have a gift package here in front of me. It is a blank deck of playing cards with nothing on them. I would like you to name a playing card. Most times, if I ask you to name a playing card, uh, most people will say the aces or a queen, but it's up to you. Name any card you'd like. Oh, because I was naturally going to go with a queen of spades. Okay. Would you want to stick with that or change your mind? I, I like her. Let's stick with her. Queen of spades. Okay. Queen of spades. I want you to see blank playing cards. Correct. You can see blank Playing cards, mm -hmm. except for those three. These Your. say mm -hmm. Your card is the Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Honey. Of all the cards. That is true. <laughs> I am 100% I am impressed. And I yeah. swear to God, 
We did not set that up. That is so cool, Bill. And what's Thank fun you. about that is in all of my virtual shows, that is a different card every single time. No one else, no one, no one, it's not set up. So, well, well I thought I would throw you off because you said people naturally choose aces and queens. So, by doing that, maybe I, but no, no. But see, that's, yeah. that's, that's not just the card. It's the spelling out of the card. Well, and, and some people could think it's law of averages. Like Gary, if you were to name any playing card, it's not a joker. What would you pick? Should I tell you? Yeah. Three of clubs. You're kidding. See, before I even came on today out of a completely different deck of playing cards, I took one card out and turned it so it was backwards. I put it in the middle of the deck, which is completely different than the queen of spades. I mean, the three of clubs, it would be, it would be incredible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I, I love magic. I really, and I, yeah. love you, so. I, and last time you were on, we, we just all collapsed at the end and <laughs> we were having a moment. It's it the, uh, the energy. Yeah. It's the I, I just love everything about it. Oh, thanks man. Cause I, 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 I know it's probably a simple, process but that's the beauty of it you are fooled by the simplest things and that's what i love about it mm -hmm. and, yeah and uh, like there was a um there's a like if people knew how much of magic is really like paper clips and bulldog clips and rubber bands and you know it, Ooh, like it, modeling it, yes yeah. oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. yeah modeling and, and what she's saying is that's what they eat Paper clips well, that, and rubber bands. And, that's how they hold their clothes together. And, yeah, and, and, and their diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how you get the 18 inch waist. Mento <laughs> coffee paper clips. Do you have anything else? Um, Probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, I'll, Bill, I'll, we're, we're here. We're free. What's well, that? Can I ask, Bill, how does 2021 look for you? I mean, what is this? coming year look like for people in the entertainment field? Are you hopeful? Uh, I mean, if you're not hopeful, you you have to be hopeful. Okay. I mean, that's, yeah. the, that's what's pulling me through this year is hope and praying to God that I'm able to get back on stage and do stuff for people. But I've got this, I've got Zoom capabilities and I've got the ability to still do work somehow, some way. Um, I'm still doing my weight loss program. So I've got that. To, I've got my health that I'm wor you know, working on and doing better with, but um, uh, I'm, I'm in line, man. The second I can get that shot in my arm, I'm ready to go. And yeah. imagine if this was happening, as I pointed out on the program, 25 plus years ago with no internet. Yeah. No internet, no cell phones. No, no, you wouldn't have the online classrooms or your shows or our show or anything. Imagine the plague of 1812. People just, you know, when was the last time we spoke to Aunt Joanne? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Guess she's off the Christmas list. Yeah. Oh, we will save a shilling on the stamps. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I talk about this often where I time travel in my head back 150 years ago and think, God, they didn't have anything because it wasn't invented. It wasn't as if they couldn't get it. It wasn't there to get. I was in London the first week, in, right after New Year's this year. And my friend took me on one of the, like, learn about the sights of London. And it was like an attraction to, you know, tourist attraction. But there was a whole segment on the plague of 1820. And it's like, or the, the, whole, the whole Black Plague thing. It's like, whoa. Looking mm -hmm. back, like, whoa, this... Yeah. Really dark. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. Yeah. <laughs> you will be. Yeah. <laughs> that and uh, Jack the Ripper was like really <laughs> scary time back then. And we have a vaccine within 10 months, which is unheard of. Right. Two vaccines. And that would normally take five to 10 years. So let's look at the bright side if we can and find yeah. that in this. And, if it, <laughs> and I was hoping, Bill, that Entenmann's raspberry coffee cake was going to be the vaccine. They do all this research and go, as it turns out, if you eat this coffee cake, you're cured. Oh, I, I was hopeful. Give me, give me, give me. Cinnamon rolls, I'm down for. Lumal Nadi's pizza, I'm down for. Uh, you mentioned you're on your weight loss program. Is that what you're referring to as far as you wanted to lose 
you had a lot of weight to lose or a little bit or what I was your 60 so far this year. I'd like to go for another 20 um, because wow. I feel like if I go for the hundred, then it's like, what are you trying to prove? Like, <laughs> I'd like to, to keep it. I'd like to say I lost 80 pounds and did it. It took me a year, but I did it. Um, but it's, a, I'm on a program. It's, you know, some time on some time off and I'm on my off period so I can still have food for the holidays, but come January 1st, I'm back on it again. Wow. Oh, Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. On that. Um, one more thing for you. Yeah. Cool. Um, David Copperfield's world renowned for his illusions and, and master tricks and things that he did. And he did a trick when I was a, a, a real young kid that to this day still sticks in my mind. And he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Right. I'm sure you've seen the, the, the video or something. Yeah. And I, I'm always leary of those tricks because, you know, he didn't. And it's got to be some trick photography sure. or something. Well, so shenanigans or something, right? Yeah, it's it, it gets too big, and then it's really un unbelievable. Right. So you you've got some variation of this. Well, I've got the exact opposite of the vanishing Statue of Liberty. I've got the appearing Statue of Liberty uh, in my basement, full size stage illusion in the palm of my hand. Well, it's not really full size. It, it, it's there. It, it's it's size. But if I bring it closer to the camera, it does um, look like an appearing at your liberty, right? And and depending on your screen, that does look full size. Ooh, she's yeah. so large. You're on a post. Yeah. Yeah. But there's the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Much easier. You can put that in your pocket and do it. Oh, she's already put away. Check that out. <laughs> yeah, because you did that thing. Look over here, and there goes the Statue of Liberty in your pocket. Right. <laughs> it's behind my ear. Yes. <laughs> well, I hope you're back on the road next year. I'm sure you are, too. And do you have anything that's remotely booked for next year that's in, in front of an audience? Um, I've got nothing yet. Because nobody um, knows, so they don't want to book anything. So, yeah, no. you got to wait it out. Anything that has come my way has either moved virtual or I've been told we're postponing it indefinitely. Which, okay, that's fine. I want everyone to be safe and healthy. That's what I want. Well, we'll talk to you again in 2021, Bill. I appreciate you coming on on Christmas. Merry before, Christmas. Before Bill goes, we'll just show off the one trick that I can do with a camera. It looks like this. We can turn Gary into toast. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope that's not a metaphor, Alan. <laughs> It, you can sell that on eBay, like the, like the Jesus toast. Well, that's what I'm hoping for someday to be on a piece of bread or any kind of food item. That means you've really made it, Bill. And All then right. I can really go, hey, <laughs> Murray, Joe Franklin, whatever Franklin you are, Ben, all the Franklins. <laughs> Thank you for your help, Leslie. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Bill. Happy New Year, guys. Hey, check this holiday greeting out from a friend of the show. Hey, Gary Force, Todd Zuckerman here, wishing you all a safe and happy holiday season. Let's bring on 2021, shall we? Cheers. Hi, everybody. This is Will Lee, wishing you a very safe and happy Merry Christmas to all the fans of Gary Meyer and the Gare Force. Hey, everybody. It's Alexander Wittenberg, here to wish all my friends at the Gary Meyer Show a very Merry Christmas. I'm here at the Barkishnikov Ballet, where I'm about to take in the Nutcracker Suite, starring a familiar face to friends of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, it is none other than Cosmo the Schnauzer. And he says, bark, 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 which translates to Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy holidays from Harvey Moshman visiting Los Angeles, where occasionally it rains. Who knew? Gary, you said if I was ever passing through this way, could I pick up your big award? I had no idea how big. Merry Christmas. I want to thank my sponsors over the past year and beyond. Bettenhausen Automotive in Tinley Park and Orland Park, Illinois. And Team Hochberg, David Hochberg and his team have been very loyal to this program for many years. And he has been fundraising for the Salvation Army this holiday season. And I think he matched, I believe, about $10,000 of his own money for this fundraiser. And he dyed his hair red. 
to keep the money going or did a challenge. If it reached a certain goal, he would dye his hair red, and he did. David, thank you. Bettenhausen, thank you. And we are wearing our air purifiers, the A3 air purifier. This gives us a four-foot bubble of protection along with the mask and everything. And Hey, Gareforce. Alan Delinka here on the editing controls. I hit pause so that we could quickly rewind to the December 11th, 2020 show to hear from 3airhealth.com's founder, Paul Morin, about a special offer for the Gare Force. Paul Morin, thank you very much. And again, that website is? 3airhealth.com. And if you enter Gare Force into the discount code, you get 30% off on any of the products I have. Great. Thank you, Paul. Really hey, thank it. you. All right. This has been really nice. Are you enjoying it? I am. It smells like rain to me. Uh, not everybody smells that, but I like the ozone. Or it smells like an old uh, model train set, somebody pointed out. I think mm, it was I Alan. like that smell. Mm. Mm. Is that what Alan said? Because he has one, too. He said it smelled like the uh, transformer on an old train set. Oh, that brings back great memories. If you're of a certain age, everybody had a Lionel train, and you're right, this big transformer would have the knobs, and you'd sit there and just watch the train go round and round, very zen. And we would get one or two items every Christmas, and now, kids, it takes three hours for the first round, and then you have a lunch break, and then you go back as a kid and do this second three hours of opening gifts. It's the whole process of, Open the gift, put it aside, what's next? So have you guys opened your gifts yet? Or are you still waiting on the flamethrower, the uh, orange? I hate to say uh, it, but I, I they said the flamethrower was out of stock. They tried to get it, but oh, it was out of stock. Yeah. Well, yeah. Darn it. Oh, well. So, yeah, I've got some very nice. Lottery tickets and that orange. Uh, yeah, I got the scratchies and that kind of stuff. I'm happy. Uh, I just want to get through the year like everybody else, and that'll be good. That's a gift. Is the uh, Gear Force Pharmacy open 24-7 on Christmas? <laughs> yes, it is. Because, boy, people need that medication, Alan. You said the, the, the air purifier smells like a, a Lionel train transformer? Well, for me, it was Tyco. I, I was a Tyco? Tyco train user, yes. Was but that the smaller was. train set, the smaller cars? I, I had the HO size, which was sort of one of the standard yeah. uh, standard toy sizes. There yeah. were several sizes smaller. I've actually seen them on display at, uh, there's a maker's fair that has come to Orlando in better years. Uh, and, and I saw some of the really tiny uh, train sets there, but this one was the standard size. Wow. They don't, kids aren't into trains like we were. That's too bad. Cause that was such a cool thing. And those houses in the back, that reminds me of the train set too, because they had, I loved all that other stuff you added to the train, the towns and the sawmill and all those little people and you'd set up a whole scene. And that's My why I like had some so. sort of commuter trains that yeah. were lit from within and yeah. you saw the outline of the people in the windows. That yeah, really that cool. and the cattle car had that too. And the oh, lumber really? and the lumber car had little pieces of wood, planks in the lumber car, and then it would offload it onto a platform. Boy, we sound <laughs> – kids today can do stuff virtually with trains. And, and going, then we go out what? to the outhouse and read our shovels. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. That's in my day. <laughs> All right. We get a little nostalgic during Christmas. It's not bad, is it? In no. 30, 50 years, the kids of today will be doing that. Well, I really like playing my my uh, PlayStation 5, and that was – people are going to be – yeah. Cyberpunk, it, it still had a lot of glitches, but yeah. it was great. Yeah, there was yeah. something called Warcraft, and I just long for that. And Okay. All right, well, hey, to each his own. Hello, Gary, Leslie, Gear Force crew, Gear Forcers, friends and family, just wishing you all a happy holiday season. Merry Christmas from Roberto and Bart. Hey guys, George Bliss here. Merry Christmas to everybody. The entire crew, we miss you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah, Gear Force members. This is Johnny from Michigan. And uh, just so you guys know, my birthday is New Year's Eve also. 
I'll be 45. Usually I go to Chicago, hang out with my friends over there, but this year is very different. And I'm missing everybody over in Chicago right now. And uh, I'm, I'm saying a prayer for Buddy Guys Legends. Uh, that's a great place to be. And I enjoy hanging out with Buddy and his family for my birthday on New Year's. Have a great one. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Be great. Be safe. Have a good day. God bless everybody. I want to get my little fix here from Carl. Carl from Plover, Wisconsin, the worm farm entrepreneur. He wants to give us a Christmas message right now. How's she going? It's Carl from Plover. I decided I was going to send you a little message here just to wish you all a Merry Christmas. So I wrote these things down here and I just, uh, for notes, because I don't think too well anymore, you know. But um, here you go. Twas another night in Plover and all those cozy deer camps. The wife and Sildy setting up a supper club with treats galore and things to admire. We got their deer sausage. You got your raccoon crock pot, GPS, which is German potato salad, you know. Um, we got the cheese balls, pickled herring, fried perch chips, pickled beets for salad, a batch of cheese curds, fried and squeaky, got to have both, uh, the bratwurst and the beloved steak tartare, which we always love. After the crappy year that we've been going through, it's nice to know that some things don't change up north. Our taverns might be closed and the supper clubs boarded up, but our starry nights continue. Bald eagles still eat deer carcasses by the side of the road. Pomida still has sails on ammo, and we got ice fishing to kill the time. Here, here at the worm farm, you know, the night callers and the leaf worms are, are doing great. They're nestled nicely under a good pile of manure. And me and the wife are just wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. As always, go pack, screw the bears, and we hope everything is going well for you guys and a good 2021. Merry Christmas, Mr. Meyer. Carl from Plover. Yeah, hey, thank you, Carl. Appreciate it. I want to wrap the show up with a song. This is from Jay Gepner. Jay was on a couple of weeks ago to talk about John Lennon and the 40th anniversary of John Lennon's death with Will Lee. And Jay is a great musician. He's also an employee at American Airlines. And a while back, another employee that worked at American Airlines was in the military and went to Iraq and lost both of his legs and an arm came back and the American Airlines employees welcomed him back and Jay wrote a song for him. And this is the song that we'll end the show with. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Leslie. Happy holidays, Alan. Thank you for all your work this year. It was fun. Looking forward to next year. Thank you, Gary. Happy holidays. Yeah, really. Thank uh, re Alan, you did such Leslie a fantastic too. job on this. He really thanks, did. Thanks, I mean, everybody, yeah. Yeah, Alan, you just really did a wonderful job putting this together for the last six months. Tula's and the song, Merry Christmas. Uh, oh, there's uh, Tula. Tula's still here. Tula Merry in a basket. Christmas, Merry Christmas, everybody. If she would take that cat off her lap. <laughs> this is a song that's called The Soldier's Christmas Song for Brian Anderson by Jay Gepner. Merry Christmas, everybody. In the battle zone My heart keeps longing For my home My home How I wish I could make it home For Christmas Home for Christmas How I wish I could hold you In my arms I'm there.
pumpkin pie I'm just praying to stay alive Alive How I wish I could make it home for Christmas Home for Christmas How I wish I could hold you Like that, I got other stuff I think you're gonna like. This is the Gare Force. really weird to do without music, but it'll do. <laughs> 